Hey everyone, it's so great to see you all again. I am really excited to be out here at the North Pole again. It looks like we have to expand venues. Are you familiar with this university? It looks like they've got some great courses too. Might want to check that out if you want to uh, study abroad for some new cybersecurity. Interesting curriculum coming on here. But yeah, it's, it's so good to be here. And I see some familiar faces out there. I see some new faces. Really glad to kind of share all these things the holiday season as we work through whatever challenge is in store for us this year. I am bringing to you this year um, how to holiday hack it, some tips for working through CTFs and pen tests. So especially if you're newer to solving CTFs or if you get stuck a lot, I know that feeling really well. Hopefully this will be good for you. So last year, I don't know if everyone knows this, but I actually had a chance to chat with Santa just a little bit before I left. And I was like, Santa, what if, what if everyone solved next year's holiday hack? How cool would that be, Santa? It would be awesome. And he said, well, that's great. How, how would we do that? What would that look like? And I said, hmm, we could tell them the answers. No, that's not how it works at all, Katie. You know, oh. Oh, well, what can I tell them? And I thought about it, right? You know, how could we get everyone, maybe not solving it, but just 10%, 20%, a little bit further than you were last year, a little bit further than you expected to, what can we do? And I can't teach you everything, right? I thought about how I usually handle these things. So I'm a penetration tester on my day-to-day -day job. I test systems for vulnerabilities, I hack things. It's great, but I'll sometimes find myself in what I call the problem spiral. And I've kind of outlined it here. You'll do your recon, right? You'll scan a system and see what services are listening, what ports are open. You'll try and understand what those services are and you'll think, oh, this is awesome. I found a vulnerability, got it, this is the one. You'll look for an exploit of it. You'll find a Metasploit module or something similar. Maybe there's some code on exploit DB and you're like, I've got this, I'm so ready. You run it, you test it and it doesn't really work. It doesn't work the way you expected it to, right? But there's, there's no need to give up hope, right? You, you try figuring out a little bit, maybe it doesn't work after you tinker, but you go find another service. You give that a shot and you identify a vulnerability and you think, this is it. And the same thing happens. And again and again, you see that little side circle, you get a little stuck. Maybe after a little while, you get sort of a, a limited access or you know more than you did before. You get a little more information that's new you can integrate. Maybe now you know a little bit about the system that you can use to try and figure out a web server if you have a local SSH connection, but it's low privileges. But in the end, you, you kind of spin around in those and you end in despair. Despair is not a holiday feeling, is it? It's not fun. I, I like having fun. I don't know about you. I'm not big on despair. So how can we cut that? We end up in this situation where it's just, oh, there's nothing that I can exploit. There's nothing I understand. I don't know anything about this. It's difficult. Good for us. We've got a capture the flag right here today that you can do right now. You can participate in this and hack it as much as you want. It's got fantastic hints and challenges. It's the Kringle Con capture the flag challenge. Or perhaps we don't even know what it is yet. But we can't know every answer, right? We, we don't necessarily, coming into this, have a way of knowing what technologies are gonna be in use. And five years down the road, I can't tell you what a capture the flag is gonna look like. There's gonna be different technologies. There'll all be all these crazy things like cloud and blockchain. I don't know what those words are, right? Yeah, they're already here. But what can we do to get unstuck? Maybe bonus tier, what if we could do that without Google as much. We could work towards it. We could aspire towards it even. I used to have all these amazing friends who were so good at playing CTF and they're still fantastic and they're still my friends, but I don't live near them anymore. I can't pick their brains as much and I wanted to learn to be just as fantastic as them. I can't say that I am, but I can at least aspire to. And here's a little bit about how I think through those challenges to try to be like them. The steps we're gonna take are understanding exactly what we're hacking. Like, okay, what are we dealing with here? We're gonna look through information that's similar to what we're looking at, try to get a sense of what the system is, what technologies are in use and how it's been hacked before, if it has. If it hasn't, we can still figure some things out. We can think it through. And then we're gonna go hack it. 
and reflect on what we've done. Before I forget to mention, I'm Katie Knowles. I'm the speaker. Whoops. <laughs> I'm a security consultant with F-Secure Consulting. Most of what I do is penetration testing, but I've been a blue teamer before, and sometimes I help with that too. I like everything in security, to be totally honest. So this is a math book, and I can hear you all drawing in your breath and thinking, oh, no, no, I didn't come here for a talk on math. And you in the back, I, I encourage you to come back in just for a little while, just a little while. It's not that bad. So this is a book that I read earlier this year called How to Solve It. Some of you might have noticed if you, you know, some of my friends at least have noticed that I've been a little less active on social media this year and I've been reading a lot. That's OK. There's there's on years and off years. But one of the books I read along the way is How to Solve It. It's a math professor who's looked into the heuristics of problem solving, how people figure things out. How does Da Vinci know how to design something? How does you know, a really brilliant student know how to solve that crazy calculus problem? What are they thinking? What steps are they taking? It's like having a math professor in your pocket if you've ever wanted someone to stand over your shoulder and go, look at the data. And that's OK, but we can simplify this. We can make this a little more hacking relevant, right? You, you shouldn't have to read that book unless you really want to. If you want to, it's a good book. But if you don't, all good. So the first thing we're going to do is try to understand the problem. What are we hacking, right? Sometimes I'll get into a problem. I don't even really understand fully what I'm hacking, especially with a CTF. You just go all out, right? You're going to scan. You're going to exploit. You're going to get so excited about this stuff. And you might not really understand when something stops what you did or didn't do. So this is just kind of that stopping and slowing down. We need to understand what the system is. What ports are listening? What operating system is it? Are the ports we expect doing the things we expect them to? How do they respond? If we talk to them with the tools we expect to, do they act the way we think they would? How does the service usually work? The other thing that I really loved that was a takeaway from this book, I'd already started doing it a little bit, but drawing. It seems ridiculous, right? This is a math book, and they're telling you to draw math problems. And that makes sense for geometry. But for hacking, I don't know. And then I tried it. And now I'm that person who won't stop drawing things all the time during conversations. It helps me a lot. It might help you, might not, but I'd give it a shot. Just try to draw out those connections. Where's your computer? What hops are in your network between you and the system you're targeting? If there's a system behind that one, is there maybe ports that are being blocked? Are there other services you don't know about? If your reverse shell isn't coming back, well, if you were using port 4444 like we all love, that might not come back through you know, some sort of firewall that it's behind or some sort of firewall rules on the host even. And it helps to think through those things. As I was drawing this out as an example, I actually explained things to myself in this theoretical thing I drew. I wrote down 80 and 443, and then I realized I hadn't told you whether they were TCP or UDP. That's important, right? Maybe I just did TCP scanning here and I forgot to do UDP. It can really help in the heat, in the heat of the moment. So now we kind of know what we're dealing with, right? We've got a sense of the, the shape and the form that it takes. We know if it's sort of a, a Linux flavor or a Windows flavor or maybe a Cisco flavor. Who knows? And we can start devising a devious plan because why else are we here, right? We got to be devious. That's half the fun. How are we going to figure out our plan? Most of you probably know this part, right? This is one of my favorite parts, too. It's called Googling things. We look for other things that are similar. We're going to look for, you know, a CTF comes in, and it's got some sort of, some sort of web situation going on, maybe even a PHP situation going on. And we're going to think, How's that been hacked before? And we're going to look it up and see if we can do those things, especially for the right versions of the software. And that's good. There's nothing wrong with that. That, in math terms, is just looking for a problem that's similar to yours. So if you're solving a calculus problem, you're going to look for one that's similar to understand how to solve a new one. We're just doing that, but in CTF form. Now you're all mathematicians. I'm sorry. <laughs> but sometimes we don't find things like that, right? Sometimes we can only find things that are sort of related. And we need to almost reverse engineer how someone found a bug or how that bug works or what they did or what discovery steps they took. That's fine too. Those can help you. All of them are information that can contribute to us having that aha moment where we go, oh, 
I'm going to do it. And then we get it and we get root and it's amazing, right? We get access to the system that we wanted. But sometimes we get stuck. We've tried looking through all these blog posts and all these write-ups. We've tried looking at all the ports, the services, and the versions. Maybe there's a thousand ports listening on this system and we don't know where to start. Maybe there's one port listening on this system and it's patched. What are we gonna do? Okay, okay, okay. Deep breath, right? If we are stuck, there's some things we can do. If it's a CTF, keep in mind, they're, they're meant to be fun. Ideally, you know, overall. And a lot of them have hints. Some of those hints might even be in places like talks at this conference. Wow, that's crazy. I don't have any of those. Santa wouldn't give me any, but you never know. You never really know, do you? But we can look at those hints and we can think, all right, all right, all right. Did we interpret them right? If someone told us to think about what access we have to a system, did they mean the web access or the SSH? If they mentioned something about ports, were they talking about making sure we scanned all the ports on a system? All those thousands and thousands and thousands of ports? Or is it making sure we did UDP? And if they're talking about you know, checking our connection, is the machine using IPv6? You never know. There's whole worlds of data that you might have accidentally missed. And if a system looks like there's no other way in, it's worth looking into those. Something else I love, kind of similar to a coding duck, right? If, if you don't know a coding duck already, they're ducks that have been trained for years, decades even, to listen carefully to our problems and present a very solemn face. And we tell them our problems and they wait for us to find the answer on our own. Yeah, it sounds a little silly, right? It's a rubber duck that you talk to. And in the process of explaining your issue, you sometimes find the answer. I've found this helpful all the time. I'll take notes on a system I'm about to give up on, trying to say where I got stuck and where I can't find any more answers. And in doing so, I'll find out the answer. It's pretty cool. Just generally understanding if we've missed any information, if there's anything else. Did we enumerate a port that looked super vulnerable at the beginning and then forgot it existed to chase another service? These things are fine. It's, it's just, you know, deep breath, come back to the data that we had to start with. Hopefully by now we've got a bit of a strategy, right? We, we kind of know what we're looking at. We generally understand, okay, these things look sort of vulnerable. These things we kind of get, cool, good. Got a little bit of a sense of where to go. We're gonna carry out our plan, our devious, nefarious scheme to get access. We're gonna hack it but it doesn't always work. That's no fun, right? Look at all these failed exploits. That's no fun at all. And it happens. That exploit completed, but no session was created. It is so frustrating to see, and I've seen it on jobs so many times. And you're just sitting there thinking, why? Why did you do this to me? And then you realize maybe you forgot to eat lunch and that port's actually closed. It happens to the best of us. In my case, you'll notice the example I did the system I'm testing against, definitely, well, I don't know. I don't know. Maybe that service isn't listening. Maybe it wasn't vulnerable to what we thought. So we can think about, okay, did we make a silly mistake? Is there something wrong with the exploit? You can look into the reliability of it. Just generally understand, is there another way to solve this? Have we been chasing down a rabbit hole of one service that we really thought was going to be the one? Maybe we're trying to exploit SSH but the vulnerability in it actually isn't that bad. And we should be looking at a different service, but we haven't checked into that just yet. That's okay, but we can kind of recenter and take a look at what we've forgotten. Other thing that I've done sometimes, do we have more information than we did before? Did we get any access anywhere? Even a, a, a tiny web shell, even a little bit of command execution. What can we do with that? How can we learn more about the system? We just want to get to know it. We want to be friends with the system and then hack it. That's, that's, that's all it is. At this point, you might need to revisit previous steps. If you hacked it, congratulations. Good work. That's awesome. If you didn't, that's still okay. All the thinking you did to get here does not go to waste. It builds your critical thinking. And that is so important. Now we get to look back, whether we succeeded or not, actually. If you want to keep following that loop until you hack it, that's great. 
But if you really just need a break, that's okay too. I love taking notes on everything I've solved. I've found it's upped my game immensely, especially in the last year. I didn't used to organize my notes very well or summarize them. Doing that gave me my own internal wiki using cherry trees, what I use. Some folks use OneNote, some folks just use Markdown. There's a ton of different ways you can do this. Just choose one. You can look back on what those vulnerabilities and those exploits were, how you fixed them, all the lessons you learned. Next time you're in a CTF, or on a job or looking at a bug bounty program. It's fantastic because it's tricky to find the right answer. You get into very specific vulnerabilities, Google won't always tell you what you want right away. It's looking for the most number of hits on a term, not necessarily what you want. I love having reference like this. Sometimes I also track how long it takes for me to figure things out. You know, you, you might look at this and think, oh, that's not five minutes, but that's okay. It's all right if you take your time with the system. You'll notice I've got a tab here for the holiday hack, but I'm not allowed to show you those answers. I'm sorry. There are some fantastic write-ups from previous years though, if you wanna go look at the other challenges. Also great reference for figuring things out. Another thing I really like, you can watch other people solving things. IPSEC has a great channel on solving a lot of systems on Hack the Box. It's fantastic to take notes on and reference in the future. Just record whatever you want. See if it works out. If it doesn't, you can give it up. I love it. We've got a great way to test this methodology, right? We've gone through our four steps, we've hacked the things, or we've gotten to a point where we want to document how far we got and maybe save it for later. And now we need to practice. So if you want to go out and get involved in the Holiday Hack Challenge, I definitely recommend you do. Even if you didn't get super involved last year, just try, try to do one, two more challenges. I'm going to push myself to as well. I have yet to finish it because I always get so busy putting together talks and having the holidays and those are great, but maybe I can finish it this year. Will you? So in summary, I don't need you to read all of these now, but I did want to give this to you so you can reference it as you work on the challenge. Make sure that when you get stuck, you don't necessarily get frustrated at first. You can take a break, sure, but when you come back, Maybe these steps will help you think through it. Feel free to screenshot this, hang on to it, whatever you need to reference whenever you get to that point of, oh my gosh, I can't possibly hack this, because you probably can. So that's all I've got for you. Huge happy holidays to all of you. Thank you for coming out to the North Pole. It's a long trip. I, uh, I get to play a lot of video games when anytime I take a flight over here. When you're stuck, just give it a shot, reframe your perspective and see if you can get a little further than you expected to on your own. I think you'll figure something out that you didn't expect to. You can take problems one step at a time. Even if you started on a crazy hectic tilt, I love doing that kind of thing, right? It's minute zero and bam, we're off. But it's okay to slow down and think things out too. That kind of thinking never goes to waste in the long run because you're training your thinking muscles. It's pretty cool. And remember to take cocoa breaks, obviously. It's the holidays. And in any time, remember to stop and savor and enjoy KringleCon. 